Well, this is what gives dramatic interest, isn't it? Uh, if you have a large Dickens novel, you have a lot of stories going on in different parts where, uh, uh, where people are doing different sorts of things in different parts of London in a Dickens novel. And um, there's a contrast and uh, an irony in, in the juxtaposition of these different things that people are doing. And the fact that uh, people are doing ludicrously different seeming things in, say, 1490s Germany and 1490s Mexico, uh, Dürer doing one drawing uh, that is uh, uh, very much set in the early culture of mo modernity, uh, and on the next uh, 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 next page, on the page before in the book, we have a stone head that's made for a Mex uh, by a Mexican sculptor for a ritual temple, and yet there's a, stra there's a, there's a, there's a strange visual imagistic affinity between these two these two pictures. Um, and you, so you connect them as simply by the resonance that sparks between the two images. And of course they take you into completely different chronologies, scales of time and so on. And then the story uh, becomes that when Mexico is conquered, 20 years later by the Spanish and the, uh, the, the booty was taken back to the court of Charles V, who is the one artist in Europe who looks at Mexican art and exclaims it in wonder? It's Dürer. Uh, Dürer uh, uh, writes eloquently about Mexico. So people's different chronologies are forced into a common frame by the... By the forward movement of history. History works, ironically, against the, the kind of completely different mindsets and uh, cultural universes in which people have lived. It forces them together until we all end up in Google, uh, our inexorable destiny. Uh, 